Hello sports fans and welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. This is our first season and episode 8 of the podcast. Today is Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019, and yes, it's still 95 degrees outside. East Tennessee's having some crazy weather this year, but relief is on the way come next week. On today's podcast, we're going to recap the Kingston Yellow Jacket victory over Stone Memorial the Jackets win big, 33-14. to Kingston's riding a three-game winning streak and seem to be rolling on all cylinders. There are three players of the game from last Friday night that received honors that we'll talk about a little later in the show. We're pleased to be joined by number 36 senior running back Bradley Keithley and excited to have him on the show. After being off last Saturday, the UT Balls prepare for number three, Georgia, to come to town. The Bulldogs are 23-point favorites, and it'll be a tough task for the balls to handle the Bulldogs this Saturday. And finally, we'll have our shout-out segment, and we'll also have our student-athletes pick the Tennessee-Georgia game. So we hope that you will listen and enjoy another edition of After the Whistle. Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host, Jody Maduski, alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman. Guys, before we get into the game from last Friday night, I'd like to recap week six in high school football action. It was Alcoa going to 5-1 and one on the season. They defeated Tyner Academy 49-0. Gatlinburg-Pittman continues to roll. They're 6-0 and now on the season. They beat Trinity Academy 41-0. Oakdale gets their first win of the season. They beat Red Bowling Springs 18-6. Scott County improves to 3-3 on the season. They beat Cumberland Gap 27-0. It was Rockwood winning the 100th game of the rivalry last Friday night against Harriman. They win 29-0. Austin East defeated Brainerd 46-36. Midway 4-1 on the season now. They beat Teleco Plains 27-6. And it was Sullivan North all over Pigeon Forge, 34-8. Welcome back to After the Whistle. All right, fellas. Let's recap Kingston's big victory over Stone Memorial last Friday night, 33-14. to Kingston wins their third game in a row. Uh, they get a well-deserved off week this week. And on October 11th, they host Scott County for their homecoming game, which will be a huge game for the Jackets. Guys, I know it's kind of early to be talking playoffs, but, um, you know, that's a must-win situation for Kingston next week. But let's recap last week's action. Huff. Tell us your take of the game. Yeah, it was a good game Friday night, Jody. Like I said, good to be home again. Uh, Kingston gets Stone Memorial. Offense kept things rolling as they have been the last few weeks. Good game for uh, Elijah Hill this week. Over 100 yards, two touchdowns. Marcus Rose, another good game, and he had a touchdown. Also, uh, Kane Collins added two touchdowns rushing on the ground this week. So, uh, overall, good, good game for the offense. Offensive line. Kept their momentum they've been uh, they've got for the last couple weeks. And like I said, overall, great game for the offense and a 33-14 win. Um, so it's good to see them get the W Friday night. Brad, tell us a little bit about how the defense played Friday. Yeah, guys, like I said, big win for Kingston, third in a row. So that's always a good thing. Uh, I thought defensively we gave up some yards last Friday night, but not a lot of points. Kind of bent but didn't break. Uh, you know, Landon Diggs had a huge game. 
16 tackles, a couple of tackles for loss, forced fumble. Uh, he got the WBR, Channel 10 Defensive Player of the Week, which is great. Uh, Trey Schultz, another big game. Uh, overall, guys, just a solid effort. And uh, Dirty, like you were saying, that Scott County game in two weeks, that's going to be a huge game. Uh, if Kingston can win that one and the Pigeon Forge games, they're in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, if you pull an upset against uh, Alcoa or GP, you know, no telling where you can finish. Yeah, it's going to be a big game. Uh, they get a week off this week and going to get rest. And um, so all the marbles next week, uh, you know, treat it as a one-game season. Take care of business. Like you guys said earlier, everybody said, we've, it's, we've won three in a row. The momentum's going. And Jody, I know Scott County, they treat Kingston like a Super Bowl in every sport, it seems like. Uh, I know in basketball, they, they're always up to play us, and uh, football the same way. So Kingston's about to bring it next Friday night. Guys, let me just recap. Two players that received special honors from last week's game was uh, Elijah Hill, like Huffman said, two touchdowns, over 100 yards rushing. He won the WKNT player of the game. Congratulations to him. And also... A game ball was given to Trey Schultz on defense for being game MVP, so that's a great honor for him. Congratulations to him. Uh, guys, great takes on the game. Good thoughts. Uh, we got a special guest. Senior running back Bradley Keithley will join us on the next segment of the podcast. Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host, Jody Maduski, alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman. We're pleased to be joined by senior running back Bradley Keithley. Bradley, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Man, we all know about your injury earlier this year, um, which was unfortunate. We, we want to say that, man, we miss seeing you out there on the football field, but talk a little bit about your uh, rehab and how it's going. Well, the rehab process is pretty difficult. There's a lot of stress and everything that puts you through, but it's all manageable as long as you do some of the stuff at home and you keep your sides forward and everything like that. Well, man, one positive thing, too, is is you've got a great head on your shoulders. I know that comes from your mother's side, um, <laughs> but you've been positive throughout. Uh, we love seeing you on the sidelines. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, when you'll be 100% when you put the pads and the helmet back on? Well, uh, probably the next time I'll be able to do that is after the season for high school. So if I was going to do it again, it'd be somewhere in college if I choose to do that. But uh, most likely after the season. Man, I was hoping you would say playoff time for Kingston, but uh, I understand that. Um, one last question before I get to Brad and Jeff. I'd like to ask you the word on the street. I heard a rumor that uh, you had a pretty funny nickname back in middle school. I hear your buddies call you Catfish. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Um, the name Catfish was uh, made by Jake Tipton and Cully Gargan. I used to wear glasses all the time, and I had whiskers as a mustache and everything like that, so they told me I looked like a catfish. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, glad you had fun with that, man. I appreciate uh, you being here tonight. Brad, you got a couple questions? Yeah, Brad, I know you're disappointed. Not being able to play this year, I know the whole team is disappointed, and uh, you know everybody looked up to you. But talk about a leadership role that you have, even though you're on the sidelines. Talk about the leadership role you have with the rest of the team and uh, getting them ready for Friday nights. I think my role as a leader is to show the team, even though I'm hurt, I'm willing to be there and support them, and they can come to me with their problems or if they have a question about the offense or the defense, I can be there for them and help them through all that good stuff. So just happy to be there and be a supportive role model for them. Uh, if you got a question, Brad? Yeah, Bradley. Uh, to echo what uh, Jody and Brad said, there's a tough loss not having you out there for the Jackets this year. But uh, being on the sidelines, what is your perspective on the team as far as where they started the season? What improvements have they made from the beginning to where we are now during the season? I see a lot of improvements were being made. Our uh, defense has been pretty solid all throughout the year. Yeah, we've let a couple of slips happen through there in the season. But our offense has made a lot of gains as well. We uh, – we're picking up from where we left off, and we're starting off very good this year. We're on a run right now of winning, so hopefully we keep doing that and we keep striving to become better as a team when we make it to the playoffs. Excellent. 
Bradley, that's, that's great takes on the season this year. One last question I want to ask you. Tell me a little bit about how you ended your season last year. I know you was a huge contributor to the team last year. And uh, talk a little bit about your success last year because you had a lot of it. A lot of success last year came off of a lot of the hard work I put off in the summer. Before that season started, I did a lot of agility ladders, a lot of running, a lot of stuff to make myself into a better running back and take hits on the field, what I could and couldn't do. So a lot of that stuff I just improved on from sophomore year and everything. One last question. I know Brad's got one more, too, for you. But now, uh, you told me earlier, before we started the uh, interview, that you gained 30 pounds uh, recently. And I was just curious if uh, uh, you might could help out my son gain a little bit of weight this summer. Are you interested in making a little money on the side? <laughs> oh, for sure. Anything to help anybody put on weight. <laughs> That's awesome. Brad? Hey, Brad, I know you said, uh, you know, the next time you put on the pads, maybe in college, is that something you might be interested in or, you know, maybe a school maybe looking at you or what do you think? Um, it's something I'm for sure interested in. Um, I feel like I still have something to put forth into the game, something that I haven't shown for myself for the two years I've missed. So hopefully I get to have that chance again, and I very much look forward to it if I do. Great. That'd be awesome. Well, Bradley, man, we appreciate you being on the show. Man, good luck to you with the rehab the rest of the way out. And, and uh, we're going to keep an eye on you. Uh, make sure you're following what the doctor tells you. And, uh, man, we're excited about seeing you back on the football field one day. All right. Thank you guys for having me, and I hope we get there. Yeah, good luck, man. Yeah, good luck, buddy. Holloway rolling out this way. Needs a block. Holloway looking. Holloway will run. Holloway for 10. Holloway for 5. Holloway for 5. Back is Kelly. The score tied at 17. The dive. Touchdown. Big on. And the super dog. We're the boys. Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host, Jody Maduski, alongside Brad Luxrell, Jeff Upman. Guys, it's our Tennessee segment. Uh, big time team coming to town this Saturday, Georgia Bulldogs ranked number three in the country. Um, guys, uh, it's no time to play around. It's, uh, it's showtime. It's put up or shut up. And it, Brad, it's going to be a tough test for them right off the bat. Yeah, Jody, I can remember a time when Tennessee played Georgia every year and we, uh, we used to stomp them every year. I know when I lived in Georgia, we beat them every year I lived there and that was, that was good times, but now the roles are reversed and, uh, you know, not really looking forward to a Saturday night, to be honest, but uh, hopefully Tennessee can do something and shock the world. 23-point favorites last I heard, guys. I, it may be a little higher than that, but uh, being at home, is that's kind of embarrassing. Um, you know, we've had a week off. We've, we've had a week to look ourselves in the mirror and do a gut check. And, and uh, guys, you guys said it earlier, we've got to show improvement. Um, and I'm tired of flipping through channels and watching the North Carolinas hang in with Clemson and other teams around the country that are not even ranked play with ranked teams. Huff, you think we got a shot at all? No, I don't think we do. I wish we did. Um, like Brad said, I've lived in Georgia for many years, and when I was there as well, we dominated the series. So my dislike for Georgia is at a, a all-time high. <laughs> Georgia is one of my most – hated teams in the SEC. So I try to – this is the game in the SEC. Every year I want to beat Georgia. I mean, I want to beat everybody we can, but I really want to beat Georgia because I just don't like them. But they're loaded. They are. They're better than us pretty much every position. Like you said, Jody, North Carolina playing Clemson tough, it kind of – you know, you kind of want to get a little hope thinking, man, you know, we got more talent than North Carolina. Maybe we can play them tough. But until we see it, I just can't, you know, I don't have any hope. Um, I'll talk about the quarterback situation a little bit because to me that's what ruffles my feathers right now. I mean, how much more do we got to see of JG that, you know, for whatever reason something's not going right. You know, I'm ready to see the freshman play. I'm ready. I'm hopeful that Maurer has been prepped for two weeks to get the start Saturday. Um I don't, I don't see it happening. I just don't think Pruitt's going to pull the trigger, but I'm hopeful that he does, and that's what I'm looking forward to more than anything Saturday night, see if we got a new quarterback out there and see what happens. What do you guys think? Well, and Brad, before I get your take, man, I'm losing confidence with this coaching staff by the week, by the day. Um, 
these guys make a ton of money, which we've mentioned several times this year. Um, you know, it's time to produce and not necessarily win, which would what we all want, obviously, but play a good football game and let it happen on the field. Let the guys give 110% and whatever happens, happens. But, dude, we got a high-powered coaching staff over there that needs to show that they can compete at this level. Yeah, Joe, it's kind of like we talked about last week. It's you know it's time to show improvement, and uh, that starts with the coaching staff. They've got to get these guys in position and ready to play. And, uh, you know, if you're not ready to play against the Georgia number three-ranked team in the country, then you shouldn't be playing in the SEC. Uh, the point. game's at home. Uh, you know, I know butt-sniffing Georgia fans <laughs> talked about checking kneeling red and black, which makes me want to puke. But that can't happen. Yeah, you can't let that happen. But, you know, the game's at night at home, you know, Environment's got to be fired up. Team's got to be fired up. And, Joe, you just hope with well, this week off that they found something and show a lot of improvement and, you know, give yourself a chance. Well, Huff, I'm like you, man. Uh, you know, it starts with JG, you know. It does. If, if, if he can have a, a couple of good series to gain a little confidence, man, he's going to have the fans to back him a little bit. But he's got to show to us that he's a leader and he's got to lead this team. He's got to take control. Uh, lead this team down the field, get a couple of, uh, you know, even a couple of field goals. Right. Would, would, I'd feel better about the situation. But you got to produce something. You can't just go three and out all the time. Right. Well, who, whoever the quarterback is Saturday, whether they play multiple quarterbacks or just JG or just Mauer, you know, like you said, they've got to produce some points early, no mistakes at home, Try to get the crowd in it early. Something good happened, you know, just to keep it close as long as we can because if they start making mistakes, that's when it's going to snowball and it's going to turn ugly. Yeah, and uh, Brad Georgia's rolling. They had a big win over Nor uh, Notre Dame last week. Um, you know, their their roster is loaded with all kinds of talent. But, you know, anything could happen. I mean, they, they're doing a bad game. You know, maybe it's this Saturday. Yeah, I watched that Notre Dame game really close, Jody. And uh, Notre Dame, actually, they had a defensive end that got pressure on Fromm a lot. He actually got by Cade Mays several times. Uh, he's a stud of a player. But, you know, that's what you got to do. You got to get pressure on the quarterback. You got to make him move. You got to make him get out of the pocket. Fromm's not really a runner. And he's, uh, like Huffman said earlier, he's not a guy that's going to put 400 yards up on you passing. But he's a good leader and uh, shows good leadership skills and gets him down the field however he needs to. But, guys, you just got to get pressure on the quarterback and uh, – your game plan has to be has to start with that. I agree with that 100. percent Guys, good takes on the on the game upcoming. We'll see what happens. Uh, man, it'd just be nice and 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 uh, something great if uh, Tennessee could pull out a victory and and we have a uh, we we may have to do a three or four hour show next <laughs> week to uh, celebrate that win. But hopefully, the Big Orange can take care of business Saturday. Guys, good takes, and we'll be back for our pick segment. Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host Jody Maduski alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman. It's time for our student athletes picked for this week's Tennessee Georgia matchup, which is Saturday at 7 p.m. Will, good job getting your buddies to show up. You, they showed up again strong tonight. Big Will, Showtime Maduski, give us your thoughts on the game Saturday. Uh, you know, I, Georgia's a lot better than we are because we suck, but uh, I must say, Georgia 42, Tennessee 0. Thank you. Mr. Brady, what do you think? Yeah, I just think we're going to get overpowered by Georgia. Georgia's been playing well. I'm going to say Georgia 52, Tennessee 14. 52, 14. All right, Mr. Bryson Bowles, what do you say? I just don't think we're going to be able to play with them Saturday. Uh, I got Georgia winning 42, 14. 42, 14. All right, Mr. Curry, what's going on, young man? Uh, I got. Uh, I think I got Georgia 52, 7. I just don't see Tennessee having a chance at this game. Like. <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible, Judge. All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, get in here, Mr. Harper Neal. 
Um, I think Samadley is going to kick a good field goal this week. Um, I got Georgia 63-3. Goodness gracious. All right. Well, I appreciate that, Harper. All right, Mr. Braden Hardup, what do you say? Uh, Georgia's really good. A bunch of five stars. Gets enough to three stars. But I think Georgia's going to win 55-7. to 55-7. Ouch. All right, Mr. Landon Diggs, can you uh, – can you bring some sanity to this show, brother? What do you what do you say? I thought about it, but Tennessee is pretty bad this year, so I'm gonna go Georgia 41, Tennessee 13. 41, 13. Hey, Mr. Bradley, Keithley, what do you say, young man? I just don't think uh, Tennessee can handle uh, Georgia's run game, so I'm gonna say 63 to seven, Georgia win. 63 to seven. 63. Is that everybody now? I think so. All right, get in here, Brad and Uffman. Man, that is some brutal predictions for the game. And, and I'm just going to say that if if any of those scores happen Saturday night, that Pruitt is done, well, his career's over. The stadium over. might be in the Tennessee River, Jody, if some of those scores happen. It might be. My goodness, that's, that's a rough outing. But, guys, um, you know, I don't blame some of them for predicting a big Georgia win. They're rolling. They got studs on the offensive line. I think I heard one time they got six or seven five stars. So there's guys on the uh, sidelines that they're not even in the game yet. And uh, Brad, I expect uh, Georgia to roll. I'm not so sure I want to pick them to win. But what do you think? Well, Jody, like we talked about last week, you know I expect to see a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and some improvement for Tennessee's team. They've had a week off, and Georgia has too. But uh, that blame, we need to see some improvement. Uh, but having said that, I can't pick Tennessee to win the game. Uh, I do think the defense will play a little better. Uh, but offensively, until our quarterback situation gets straightened out, I don't see much improvement there. I'm going to go Georgia 38, Tennessee 10. Huffman, all right, before I give my pick, you're kind of the last resource we got here on this game. But, you know, North Carolina played with Clemson last week. They had a freshman quarterback, played with them the entire game. Trevor Lawrence was shook. They had a chance to win the game with a freshman quarterback. Do we have any chance at all with a four-year quarterback to beat Georgia? Um, let me think about that for a minute. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> like you guys said, it's going to be brutal. Now, I would, I agree with you, Jody. I'd like to go into it thinking, hey, we've got more talent in, Cle in North Carolina. Maybe we could shock the world and do what they did against Clemson last week and play a tight game against – Georgia, but nothing I've seen so far gives me any hope of that. And if JG plays, then I know it's not going to happen. So my only hope is Brian Maurer starts, has a game of his life, but it's not going to happen. So it's going to be a lot of Georgia, little Tennessee. I'm going to go with my heart a little bit, say it's closer than what it probably will be. Georgia 34, Tennessee 10. That's not really close, Huffman, but okay. <laughs> it's uh, closer than the 56 to 3 and 64 to 2. And sure, sure. Um, guys, I, I, I feel your pain. It's, it's a rough road. We're not playing well. Georgia is playing well. Um, it's been a long time that I can remember, Brad, that we've been 23-point underdogs at home. At home. And uh, Mercy. I, I know – uh, what everybody says and and how everybody feels, but uh, it just it's just not in my blood to pick Georgia. I'm going to say Tennessee gets the victory. <laughs> Tennessee kicks a 63 yard field goal at the end of the game. They win this ball game 27 24. This ain't a comedy show now. <laughs> hey, student athletes, I appreciate you guys showing up strong today. Thanks for being here for the picks. Brad Huffman, we're just going to have to see what happens. It's going to be a long day, I think. And for the record, Jody, I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs>
state tournament play next week. Yeah, that's awesome. Good luck to them. Brad, who you got a shout out for tonight? I'm going to give a shout out to Coach Nesbitt over at Rome State. Uh, he's did a uh, training session with uh, some of the basketball players on Kingston's high school team for the last five weeks. Uh, helped them with their agility and speed and jumping ability. So shout out to him for doing a good job. All right, Will Maduski, you'd like to give a special shout out. Um, yes, I would. We would like to give a shout out to Caden Grigsby. I just want you to know that our thoughts and prayers are with you and with your family. Very nice. Okay, um, my shout out goes to the Tennessee Tech football team. Uh, they are currently four and one. Best start since 2010. Wings up. Wings up. And uh, Brad, you had one more you'd like to give? Well, it's not really a shout out, but you know my Cardinals and your Braves are playing against each other, Jody, this weekend in the baseball divisional series. So we got a little bit riding on the line this weekend. Looking man. forward to a friendly wager on that series. Oh yeah, starts tomorrow. I, I expect the Braves to do well. Um, probably not going to be a matchup, but we'll we'll get to that <laughs> later. Chop on, <laughs> guys. Good good podcast tonight. Uh, we had a good time. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to. Bradley, thanks to the student athletes and guys, thanks uh, for you guys for showing up again. And uh, hey, we'll do it again next week. We'll see you on the radio.